CBC Chairperson, Mr. Najib Saha, President, PhD Chamber of Commerce, my colleague on dais, of dais, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. See, we started with the lightening of lamp, and I'm not finding vibration for GST, which is one nation, one tax. Please join me together to thanks CBC Chairperson, with big round of applause for joining today. That is moral booster, believe me, he was so highly occupied today. In spite of BG schedule, he has taken out his time and giving time to us. And this GST, which we are talking about, one nation, one tax, is all of us going to face GST after independence, since independence. Why we need GST is a very important for all of us together. As we all know, India has got multiplicity of taxes, be at central level, be at state level. Around 17 indirect taxes merging in one basket, that is called GST. So this multiplicity will go away. India is struggling with the cascading of taxes. Tax credit is not available. Excise duty charged by a manufacturer to a VAT dealer, no credit in the hands of VAT dealer. VAT dealer charging VAT to a service provider, no credit in the hands of service provider. Or service provider charging service tax to a VAT dealer, no credit. Luxury tax, entertainment tax, CST, entry tax, number of taxes cascading credit is not available. That increase inefficiency, incompetitiveness in our pricing and costing of goods and services. It will go away in GST. Third, we are struggling with the double taxes today. A particular transaction, both applicable service tax and VAT. AC restaurant is known to all of us together. We are paying VAT and we are paying service tax on 40 percent. Software, we are paying complete VAT and complete service tax on same base of transaction. Construction, works contract, IPR, right to use of movable goods. This double taxes will go away because GST is going to provide clarity and certainty. A transaction can either be supply of goods or supply of services. So double taxes will go away post GST. I have given three advantages, but the foremost advantage, which is tag word today, one nation, one tax. I can tell you we are in NCR region. Gurgaon, just 10 kilometers away. Whatever Haryana VAT provision applicable is not applicable in Delhi. Whatever applicable in Delhi is not applicable just 10 kilometers away in Noida. So we got state barrier. Though we are within union territory of India, but we got state barrier. And post GST, this state barrier will go away. Our Honorable Prime Minister has said, GST is one nation, one tax. I can only draw one conclusion. And how he's stating so, it is going to be applicable from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. And this GST law, to me, it looks like a Bible, Gita, Quran, irrespective of any language, caste, religion, race, because whatever applicable in Delhi is going to be applicable all over India. This is realistic term, one nation, one tax. These are the advantage we see in GST. Having said so, India is following dual model of GST, right? Dual model, intrastate, CGST, and SGST applicable, interstate, IGST applicable. Now, these are the basic background of one nation, one tax. Importantly, this union budget 2017, you have seen Honorable Finance Minister has not made much of the changes in indirect tax. Keeping an eye that GST will roll out from July 1, 2017. And he has made three important remarks. And what are the three important remarks? The first one, the differences between center and state is now ironing out, resolving. Second, IT preparedness is going on full flow. 
GSTN network would be ready. And third, for GST awareness program will start from April 1, 2017. Now, I got such an observation and I would look forward that we get answer from the government side and I will look forward from Mr. Najib Shah to comment upon on some of the observation which we perceive require some clarification. The first one, cross empowerment. GST Council in their ninth meeting on 16 January decided SSE having turnover less than 1.5 crore, 90% will go to the state and 10% will go to the center. More than 1.5 crore, 50% will go to the state and 50% will go to the center. The big question coming up, interstate supply of goods or services IGST applicable and IGST is the exclusive territory power of central government, parliament in terms of article 246A sub clause 2 read with 269A question comes and it's apprehension rage in the trade whether center power can be delegated unless it is allowed by the constitution of India first part. Second part GST is a destination based consumption tax, but IGST applicable and it would be adjudicated and assessed by origin state. So what is the guarantee origin state will take care of revenue component for destination state. Coming to the next component, 4 tire rate, our uh, President PSD Chamber of Commerce has raised the concern that 4 tire rate is being prescribed but the classification is not yet available. And I can just take one case study, like consumer durables, color television, washing machine, refrigerator. If you look at existing indirect taxes applicable, around 30, 31%. And our Honorable Revenue Secretary has said, there's a mathematical equation. If existing tax incidence is 30%, most probably our product going to fall under 28 percent. But question rates on color television, MRP based, those standard rate excise duty 12.5, but effective rate would be lower. And can we put color television, washing machine, refrigerator, I'm just sick, saying for the sake of understanding, put under 28 percent slab. This is the need of arm army. So if this classification list would have been provided, we would have done our analysis impact and understood how GST is going to be applicable in terms of classification, decided for tire rate. Service taxability, nothing is being stated, but it is being heard. GST rate as going to be applicable 18 percent standard rate for service taxability. But there are certain services under abatement, under valuation. We cannot apply 18 percent and apprehension age, healthcare services and education which is exempted today from service tax may be chargeable to GST. Are we going to apply 18% standard rate or there would be lower GST rate applicable for service taxability, maybe 12% or 5%. Coming to the third component, we all are awaiting for GST law along with all the rules. We got only revised model GST law which came on public domain on 26th November 2016, but unless final law comes with all the rules, we cannot do impact analysis, how it is going to impact our supply chain of goods and services. Second, IT preparedness. We have to make all IT changes. How IT changes can be initiated unless final law comes on public domain. We look forward from clar for clarity by when we can have final GST law coming on public domain. And the last and foremost one, GSTN network. This is front end business processes with GST Subida service provider. We are going to have registration, payment, and return filing. Can we have prototype available so that trade can familiarize used to how this GSTN front end business processes with GST Subida service provider registration is going to take place? Payment going to take place, return going to be filed. If prototype is available, we can prepare, prepare well in advance for GST implementation by July 1, 2017. Some of the observation on revised model GST law, sir. This has come on public domain on 26th November, and I'm only highlighting five important parameters from revised model GST law. 
at the time is paused and uh, respected CVC chairperson has to leave by 10.20. I'm not extending my opening remarks, but highlighting five important parameters. The first important parameter, the existing concept of manufacturing, sale of goods, rendering of services will go away, and taxable event would be supply of goods or services. The way supply is being defined is a wider definition, an inclusive definition. And stock transfer, which is presently not chargeable to VAT, going to be chargeable for GST. Question is, if stock transfer chargeable, it would be chargeable on transaction value, sell price, or cost price, first component. Second component, within the definition of supply, if employee providing services to the employer, it is neither a supply of goods nor supply of services. But if you go to Schedule 1, this talks about supply even without consideration. Supply of service between related person. An employer and employee are related person. So indirectly, even there is no consideration, GST applicable. Otherwise, in Schedule 3, it is stated to be, it is neither a supply of goods nor supply of services. Coming to the second important parameter, GST importantly required for seamless flow of credit. We do not want to have any negative list in GST regime. Presently, we are struggling with the sandwich credit rules, and we know number of items are being restricted. Credit is not available. We do not want to carry forward with the same legacy post-GST, like construction of immovable property, factory constructed, office constructed, GST paid, and such office are going to use for taxable outward supply credit is not available need to be looked into. GST, thumb rule would be whatever taxes paid on input and input service label, credits should be available. Second, in GST ITC, ITC mismatching and ITC matching. And second component, recipient paying taxes to the supplier and supplier not depositing the taxes, credit is not available in the hands of recipient. This is what the provision. So we wanted to have some clarity. This ITC matching and mismatching is very much dependent upon my outward supply would be inward supply for recipient. But how this GSTN going to catch hold of all these transactions? Because we are bringing SME and MSME sector. They are not prone to IT. They are only manually operated. How they are being made compatible with ITC matching and mismatching along with taxes paid to the supplier, supplier not depositing, credit is being denied in the hands of recipient. Coming to the time of supply, which is point of taxation. If you're a service tax SEC, you must be knowing point of taxation, but from excise and VAT perspective, you only know excise applicable on manufacturing and sale tax applicable on sale of goods. But now any advance money received, even for supply to be made after three months GST applicable, but corresponding credit would be available only at the time of actual receipt of goods and services. Time period gap is there. Coming to the export and import community. Today, if you're an exporter community, you know you can procure raw material even without payment of taxes. Rule 19, Central Excise Rule 2002. But post GST, these exemption will go away. We have to pay taxes on procurement of input and input services and go for refund. So there would be working capital held up in a process and that will hit back to the export community. In this process, today advanced license, EPCG license, these licenses are being used for complete exemption, complete custom duty exemption. But post GST, these would be restricted only for basic custom duty purpose because CVD and SAD is going to be subsumed in IGST applicable on import of goods or import of services. What happened to our MEIS and SEIS credit script? Today this can be used even for payment of custom duty, excise duty and service tax, but excise and service tax getting merged in GST that meaning thereby MEIS and SEIS would be restricted only to the extent of basic custom duty. So export community is really looking for clarity. Why can't we have these credit script carried forward from CGST perspective or IGST perspective? 
coming to the next component, excise exempted unit, Uttaranchal and Himachal, they are absolutely exempted. They are concerned what happened post GST, whether their exemption will continue. GST Council has already stated they are going to have refund mechanism post GST for such kind of excise exempted unit. But the question is to what extent refund would be available and what would be the basis of calculation? Nothing is being prescribed as on date. Coming to the last component of my opening remarks, which I would like to highlight from uh, and want to say to our CBC chairperson today, sir, trade is interacting. Even PSG Chamber of Commerce has submitted number of suggestions even on revised model GST law. These are the opening some observation which I have said. But one of the important parameters, now aggregate turnover for GST registration is only 20 lakh rupees. SSI manufacturer 1.5 crore will go away. SME and MSME sector, which we have seen across India, in any state, they are not IT pro. They are not well versed with the IT process. So maybe in GST we require some provision for SME and MSME sector. In case they are not being able to follow the provision, regular compliances, there will not be any penalty. So transition provision must have one year or two year clause which must state that for two years no penalty would be leviable. They require some education and training also. Not only for the trade industry and commerce, this training is also required for central government and state government. If state is being empowered now to adjudicate an assessment done 90%, less than 1.5 crore, 50% more than 1.5 crore, we all know state are not well versed how taxability happen on services. They have not done in the past. First time they are going to give in this power. So we have to see whether state government officers are really competent enough to do adjudication and assessment for service taxability. So this training is very important. Honorable Finance Minister has said that GST awareness will start from April 1, 2017. But keeping eye July 1, 2017, only three months left. And we all are looking for the CGST and IGST bill must pass during the second leg of budget session so that we can see GST light by July 1, 2017. But to make it July 1, 2017, important would be trade awareness required extensively. It is not only for the large MNC and foreign MNC. It is for SME and MSME sector as well. So I've given my opening remarks. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much.